welcome to aircraft design module 5 wing design of an aircraft without wing aircraft cannot fly which is the critical part used for lifting turning landing and controlling of the airplane in the previous module you have learned about the initial sizing of the aircraft's weight and calculating the fuel tank volume now in this module you will learn how to design a wing of your aircraft based on federal and military aviation regulations for various aerodynamic consideration. It starts with selection of wing configuration with various platform, number of wings and its location. Then estimation of aerodynamic coefficient of an airfoil which will satisfy the following airfoil with a thickness to chord ratio. Then followed with wing parameters like aspect ratio, wing area, span, taper ratio, mean aerodynamic chord, then swap angle, twist angle, incident angle and dihedral angle to satisfy the fuel tank volume. Then you will also learn about the high lifting device and its application and finally you will calculate the lift force obtained during takeoff, landing and cruise. So, this video can extend a bit long. Stay tuned till the end of the lecture and definitely you will gain knowledge from it. So, before proceeding, here is my wing configuration data for a large passenger aircraft wherein each phases I will give you the demonstration how to do a wing design and obtain the parameters with justification. And similarly, you can proceed for your design. So we will start with based on federal and military aviation regulations. It is highly desirable to predict the maximum lift coefficient and the stalling characteristics of an any aircraft in the design phase. So starting with the selection of wing platform. It is a top viewed layout or the shape of an wing. So, which influences the aerodynamic characteristics like stall progression and performance of the aircraft. So, basically there are four platforms, rectangular, elliptical, tapered and swept. First is the rectangular wing. Rectangular wing, it is an excellent from a manufacturing point of view, is a straight and untapered wing, mostly used for small allied general aircraft like a uh, Piper 38 but it doesn't provide a aerodynamically efficient one but in case of elliptical it has basically of two types elliptical and semi elliptical it is just a reverse of rectangular wing which is aerodynamically more efficient but poor from a manufacturing point of view but the most significant example is in Spitfire it aimed not only to minimize the drag but also create a house for landing gear along with an armature and guns inside a wing next comes tapper wing tapper wing are basically of four types one is a tapper reverse tapper compound tapper and tapper outboard so tapper wing is a modified version of rectangular wing which is a line between moderate efficiency and moderate manufacturability under this swept tapper wing provides an outstanding performance at a high speed flight trailing edge of the wing swept forward and the leading edge swept backward the most well-known combat aircraft is a lockheed martin raptor 22a Next is swept back. Swept back having another four types swept back wing, swept forward, variable swept, and variable oblique wing. The swept back wings, those leading edge are swept backward to reduce the drag and when the aircraft flying at transonic speed like Boeing, Airbus, passenger aircrafts. Now one more specific type of wing is a delta wing. Delta wing of mostly five types. One is the tailless delta. Then we have tail delta wing. Then crop delta, 
compound delta compound delta is also known as double delta wing and the ogive delta wing mostly ogive delta wing aims to reduce the drag at an uh, high speed mostly found in the high speed passenger aircraft like concorde aircraft and all delta wings are swept wings not all swept wings are the delta wing please make a note of that so based on your design criteria please select the type of wing platform coming to the next is the number of wings that depends on the designer basically of three types monoplane biplane and triplane wing so based on the principle that more the number of surface area which helps to pressure exerted more on the surface and hence generate more amount of lift in addition it's also create the more amount of interference drag a uh, triplane as an fokker biplane as a wright brothers and uh, monoplane aircrafts like commercial any aircrafts though mostly monoplanes is preferred at the current scenario to reduce the interference drag monoplane with maybe monoplane wing may be mounted at various positions relative to the fuselage like high wing mid wing low wing parasol wing so based on the purpose of the aircraft as shown that that most of the cargo aircraft is configured with high wing fighter aircraft with the mid wing large passenger aircraft configured with low wing configuration and parasol with an ultimate light aircraft or the ultra light aircraft home built etc are configured with a parasol wing to know more about the effects of wing configuration link is in the description box to satisfy the fuel tank volume let's to choose the thickness of the wing section which involves choosing the airfoil with respect to corresponding flight velocity now selection of airfoil also depends on lift coefficient aerodynamic efficiency movement coefficient other parameters like wing area swept angle etc so let's find the approximate cl of an airfoil now recalling the steady level flight that is lift equals to weight so lift equals to half rho v square rho s cl now at the cruise to find out the cruise velocity equals to some amount of maximum velocity mostly it is 90 to 96 percentage so let's consider the 90 percentage that is cruise velocity equals to 0.9 into v max now after substituting the v max is 290 for our design criteria then i have got 261 meter per second is my cruise velocity of my design flight then substituting the values in this cl basic lift coefficient of a wing of an entire aircraft that is density at the cruise altitude now here we have considered the cruise altitude as 13.5 km so at that particular altitude the density becomes 0.246 kg per meter cube now here in case of wing loading cross check the value here our wing loading was 750 kg per meter square now convert that in newton per meter square as you can see in the table for an hour aircraft it produce the range between 4500 to 7500 newton per meter square now if i calculate our parameters that 750 into 9.81 to obtain newton per meter square we get as 7357.5 newton per meter square and which is a proper limit now substituting back and we get that cl cruise becomes 0.878 now to find for wing alone the cl then we are going to divide that cl of the aircraft at the cruise by 0.95 after that we get 0.924 now further calculating that to find for the airfoil clc at for airfoil for the cruise be divided by 0.9 we get 0.924 by 0.9 becomes 1.03 now based on this parameter we are going to find a airfoil one of the most important parameters in designing wing of an aircraft is selecting a proper airfoil suits for an flight speed as shown in figure in this aircraft selection 
can be performed based on the aircraft speed and the requirements can be picked from the following figure as you can see the figure a from the figure a will be suitable for the subsonic flight and from the b c and d is suitable for the supersonic or high speed aircrafts so based on that particular profile you have to select an airfoil next comes airfoil thickness ratio has an important or impact on the drag lift coefficient stalling characteristics structural weight and critical mach number as per the thumb rule typically the values for an airfoil maximum thickness to core ratio of an aircraft ranges between 3 to 18 percentage as you can see in the table for your kind guidance you can refer that for a low speed with an high lift requirement like that is cargo which thickness to core ratio maximum ranges between 15% to 18 percentage whereas for high speed aircraft or transonic speed um, which ranges from high subsonic passengers the, the thickness to core ratio ranging between 9 to 12 and for the supersonic it becoming 3 to 9 percentage now if you see the comparative data for my large passenger aircraft the thickness to core ratio should range from 9 to 12 percentage so if the wing is desired for high subsonic passenger aircraft select the thinnest airfoil the reason is to choose or to reduce the critical mach number and drag divergence mach number as the graph shows thinner airfoil will have the high critical mach number than the thicker airfoil okay so these are the basic nomenclatures of an airfoil there are several airfoil series each series have its own advantages and disadvantages based on the application select the your own series after selecting the appropriate series you can see for business jet for aircraft uh, for large passenger aircraft for fighters which series is preferable now after that according to me i prefer airfoil tool so i will go open an airfoil tool website from there i will give the minimum minimum thickness is 9 and the maximum is 12 and i will prefer for all sort of airfoils now here is my sample airfoils so many sample airfoils are coming up now based on the sample airfoils i will pick the Mm, best one for me because our criteria was 1.03 value and based on that particular value i will try to take a higher than that particular value and i will also check that um, angle of attack of stall stalling angle of attack so based on such criteria the thickness stalling angle and the cl which is opted so based on this criteria i will pick the best five airfoil so you can see here i have picked the best five airfoil now initially what i will do is i will the best one i find here is nasa sc20610 and second one is a naka 23012 now from here uh, though this naka 23012 have an 15 degree uh, stalling angle but it has an thickness to core ratio 12 i don't want to go increase my thickness to core ratio so i will choose the best one as an sc20610 so after obtaining i will proceed for the next now see nowadays selection of airfoil is done using computer program such as uh, xfoil xflr5 uh, there are so many are widely used in the design industries so according to your design you can also modify your tabular column like this also you can find your l by d accordingly you can find the airfoil and satisfy the other criterias now moving to then aspect ratio aspect ratio is the ratio between the square of span by the wing area so based on the type of number of wings the aspect ratio will also vary for monoplane the aspect ratio is b square by a for biplane 2b square by a for triplane 3b square by s to know more about the aspect ratio on an aircraft link is in the description box so from the table it is clear that more the speed less the value for the aspect ratio which helps for better maneuver uh based on your type of aircraft you need to select the particular 
platform now coming to an using the optimized value for an wing loading that is 750 kg per meter square now we need to obtain the wing area so wing area can be written as wt naught by wing loading so whereas the w T0 becomes 33178.610 which we have obtained from weight estimation divided by the swing loading that we have optimized that is 750 kg per meter square now substituting the value we get that value of wing area is about 442.38 meter square now to obtain the wing span recalling the aspect ratio aspect ratio we have chosen 9.5 so aspect ratio equals to b square by s so b becomes root over ar into s substituting the value that is 9.5 into 442.83 and resolving we get as 64.83 meter that is the span length wing span length coming to the next is a tapper ratio tapper ratio is an ratio between the tip cord to the root cord so basically tapper ratio denoted by the terms lambda which is ranges between 0 to 1 and tapper ratio plays a very important role in an induced rack structural weight and fabrication point of view now considering the induced rack the induced rack gets lower for a tapper ratio between 0.3 to 0.5 if the tapper ratio that lower than 0.2 should be avoided for an should be avoided for all because it's promote tip stalling so considering that so again comparing the comparative data study for an large passenger aircraft here you can see the tapper ratio varies from aircraft to aircraft so you can see it is also ranging between 0.15 to 0.320 so as we know that it helps to reduce the induced drag when it is between 0.3 to 0.5 so here i will choose my tapper ratio for my design as to be 0.3 so considering that 0.3 i will substitute in that formula that is root cord formula that is 2s by b 1 plus of lambda substituting i have got my root cord about 10.5 meter then substituting back to original tapper ratio formula cord becomes lambda into cr equals to 0.3 into 10.5 becomes 3.15 meter the next one is to find the mean aerodynamic cord mac using the formula that is c bar equals to or c mean equals to 2/3 of cr 1 plus lambda plus lambda square by 1 plus of lambda now substituting back the values and after calculating we got the c mean aerodynamic cord becomes 7.5 meter and if you see the data which we have found for the large passenger aircraft and which is ranging within this 7.5 So moving to an uh, next parameter is a swept angle it is a angle between the wing quarter cord line and the lateral axis of an aircraft as shown in figure it also affects the maximum lift drag coefficient critical mach number structural weight stability etc and so on so how to find the swept angle for your aircraft now using this formula as you can see for uh, based on your flight speed if the mach number is less than 0.65 there won't be any swept angle but once it increases the angle you have to use based on this formula now our mach number is about 0.85 now i have i am going to use this formula now substituting the corresponding value of my aircraft and i have obtained this swept angle at the leading edge becomes 35.31 degree now substituting back to the previous equation again then i am getting us that quarter cord swept angle becomes 32.2 degree so this becomes my quarter cord swept angle now coming back to the reference that um, for my large passenger aircraft which is ranging between 28 to 37.5 so as you can see that 32.2 is ranging within the proper limit so the my estimation or the calculation yet now is completely perfect so in case of fighter aircraft uh, keeping that in mind in case of fighter aircraft the swept angle tends to reduce the shock wave based on the proper thumb thumb rule that 20% higher the swept angle 
will guaranteed the lower the wave drag at an supersonic speed so swap angle must be greater than the mach angle using this formula that is mu sin inverse of 1 by mach once you find the mu then substitute back over here capital lambda equals to 1.290 minus mu and see what is the value of your lambda like how you have to satisfy your design requirement next comes twist angle according to the remer wing twist typically ranges between 0 to minus 5 degree this number applies to an conventional wings which are swept after here the twist is used to avoid the tip stall which is an characteristics of an untwisted and aft swept wings now twist can be of two types one is a geometrical twist and second is a aerodynamic twist geometric twist further of two types one is a wash out and wash in now wash out means when the root chord is an of zero angle of attack and the tip is a negative angle of attack such kind of phenomena given wash out twist but keeping in mind both the airfoil of same naka series second category is a washin washin means when the root airfoil is in zero degree and the tip section airfoil of an positive angle of attack such positive twist gives an washin twist but in case of aerodynamic twist both the root section and the tip section are different airfoil section it can be as you can see in the figure the root chord section they have considered naka 3 6 3 4 221 the thickness is around 21 percentage whereas the tip section they have considered the naka 0024 that means thickness is 24 due to the difference in airfoil in the root section and the tip section it created an automatic twist such twist is known as an aerodynamic twist and it leads to an wing incidence that is iw so ang uh, twist angle is equivalent to the wing angle at tip and the wing incident at the root so based on this criteria based on your design criteria or the reference table you can choose a proper angle of incidence for your design aircraft so mostly uh, for my design i will consider the 2 degree angle of incidence not more than that So coming to the next is an dihedral angle is an angle subtended from the horizontal line or from the ground plane to the wing which influences on the stability point of view so uh, here dihedral also plays an important role based on the placement of the wing of an fuselage so the mostly the wing tends to have considerably greater dihedral angle than the high wing so for an example for the passenger aircraft and high wing gives a negative dihedral angle which is called as anhedral to balance between the lateral stability and the roll control so based on the parameters are displayed for a high wing 0 to 1 and for a low wing even 3 to 8 degree it can be considered so based on your type of aircraft you can select the best parameters for your design coming to an most important factor is an volume of wing so often the cross sectional area of an airfoil must be calculated using some clues about an internal volume of a wing available for an fuel storage right so based on the internal geometry estimations so first what we'll do is we'll split the airfoil in two section first is an parabolic section and second is a triangle section so the parabolic section will be sp uh, split from the position of maximum thickness point of the chord and remaining will be the triangular section so as you can see so we have given some nomenclatures of that particular uh, phenomena the length of the airfoil is c and uh, from the section k is the location of maximum thickness of the chord and remaining is 1 minus of k of c and thickness is d you can see there so we will get the area of the airfoil becomes k plus 3 by 6 by t by c of c square so this is the formula for the volume of an uh, airfoil that is b into c r square by 12 k r plus 3 t by c of r plus k t plus 3 t by c of t lambda square 
now all the suffix of r represents that root section and t suffix represent the tip section now uh, naka sc series and in that series we have the 10% of thickness and 38% of the cord at the 38th percentage of the cord so uh, that means around 0.38 of the cord right that is kr becomes 0.38 and t by c becomes 0 0.10 now substituting back in this formula and b what we have calculated is 64.83 and cr value is 10.5 now based on the formula after substituting and we are getting the value about 21.44 meter cube now recalling that in my last uh, lecture we have considered that tank volume capacity came around 24 5.935 meter cube so that means the volume which i'm getting is less and that won't satisfy my requirement now what i'm gonna do is this design is not satisfying my requirement so i need to make some changes so i will show you the changes which i made now i will go back to my selection of airfoil now in that selection of airfoil what i'm gonna do is i'm going to select now i'm going to do a minute change in my airfoil design the change is that in the root cord i will consider naka 23012 and the tip i will consider naka sc20610 now here each having its own parameters that for naka 23012 uh, it is in 12 percentage of thickness and uh, root cord is 29.8 percentage of the total thickness and in case of this it is 38 so using this formula okay the total wing volume can be obtained so where lambda becomes tapper ratio and k becomes a location of airfoils maximum thickness as a fraction of cord and the subscripts of r and t refers to that root and the deep airfoil maximum thickness at percentage of cord okay so in case of 23012 it is 29.8 percentage of cord that means point k value is about 0.29 but in case of for the tip it becomes 0.38 now substituting back in this equation again and rearranging the form okay and where i'm getting the value about value about 253.272 meter cube and uh, now it is you can conclude that it is satisfying the volume of my fuel tank so i can proceed further now so i will proceed with an selection of high lifting device now high lifting device are the movable surface or mostly used during takeoff and landing so most commonly high lifting device are flaps slats right etc so here are few of the types common types of flaps and slats by comparing the various uh, type of flaps each flaps having its own lift increment and with an application so our type is an j transport so here in my design i will compare few datas here are the basic uh, examples as well as these are the comparative data which i have found for my design table for my design parameters so mostly they have used uh, slats as a leading edge flap and trailing edge they have used double slotted flap so but in case of my design i am going to choose a fowler type b77 jet transport using fowler type with a leading edge slat you can also select a type of flap based on your design criteria moving to the next is a wing tip now wing tip of, of several types you can see all right now here i will use a blended wing type of for my design criteria because boeing 737 and 757 are mostly uses as a blended wing uh, winglets and it is also configured very simple not like with a fence winglet so this is also my type and based on your design configuration we can select the type of winglets now coming to the next is and finding out the lift forces okay to measure the aerodynamic efficiency the value of lift coefficient to drag depends on the drag puller and analyzing the range and endurance of a given aircraft 
so first proceed with an stalling velocity based on far so based on far part 23 the gross weight of the aircraft more than 2722 kg may not exceed the stalling speed greater than 31.38 meter per second but in case of light aircraft like gliders and all it should not exceed more than 23.15 meter per second but in case of today's our design is about large passenger aircraft or any fighter aircraft there are no maximum stall speed requirement for an transport jet so as per the rule we have v max equals to k v s now k is the value or the factor depends on type of aircraft in case of fighter you need to multiply 1.1 and in case of jet transport and aircraft need to multiply 1.2 in addition multiplying by ultimate load factor of a respective aircraft in my next slide you can see that uh, for an transport jet which we are designing over here which i am designing over here it's about maximum ultimate load is 4 now uh, i will multiply that uh, with terms that is 290 by 1.2 into 4 so where i get my stalling speed as 60.442 meter per second so based on your type of aircraft you can multiply with an ultimate load factor for your design aircraft proceed with the next is that to find out the maximum lift coefficient of an airfoil so for cl max becomes that uh, 2 W by S V stall square rho at the sea level. Now substituting the values of wing loading is seven three five seven point five. Rho at sea level is one two two five, and V stall just obtained that is sixty point four two square. Now substituting back, we get that maximum CL becomes three point two nine one. Now for the wing, similar fashion, we will find that CL max by 0.95, we get as 3.46, and for the airfoil, that is uh, divided by 0.9, we will get as 3.85. Now recalling that we have selected here is a Fowler type, which is when it is fully deflected, and the slat type. Now to find out the CL max. This is a gross value which we have obtained without that uh, high lifting device. So we will get that actual we will get as an 2.25 without the high lifting device. So now recalling back lift force during takeoff. Now uh, we know the proper values that is half rho v square SCL. Density at the sea level is 1.225 kg per meter cube. For a general aircraft, can be found using 1.2 of V stall. V stall is 60.42 into 1.2. You will get 72.504. Now wingspan area uh, is 442.38, and CL at maximum deflection is on 2.25 as we have obtained right now. So using this formula, we will get substituting back to the original formula and get us 3204852.35. Now coming to the next similar fashion, we will find for the landing. For landing here, you have to carefully choose the landing speed. So using simple formula that is W by S of landing, that half rho C L max. Okay, for a general aircraft, landing weight should be equal to 0.85 of total takeoff weight. So using the parameters, we have to find out the weight of the uh, weight of the aircraft during landing. Substitute it there. Then the lift coefficient for landing that is divided the total takeoff weight divided by 1.2 we will get as 1.875. Now substitute all the parameters in the previous equation and you will get 2724463.021 newton. For the cruise we already found out that uh, lift coefficient value. Just you need to substitute to find out the lift force and we will get around 3359870.8 newton. and finally you will write down all the parameters for your aircraft which you have finally chosen and optimized and uh, further you can proceed that sketch model using this following software okay open source vsp this is a vehicle sketch pad it is um, you can download and you can work on this various design configuration So later part of the aircraft design you'll be studying about fuselage design hope you are enjoying this course and uh, it's getting informative for you all we'll love to hear your feedback so i can improve my teaching skills hope to see you again in my next module thank you so much for watching take care stay blessed